Hey, I'm Russ from Pilates Guy, and I'm just going to talk to you a little bit today about posture. Um, there's a lot of negative impacts that happen through the body when we have a poor posture. Um, and I'm just going to take you through a little routine of Pilates based exercises which will help to improve various different postures. A uh, very rounded approach is quite general, so it's going to help with various different core of misalignments with the, um, with the body and with the spine. So it'd be good if you sit down a lot, it'd be good if you stand up a lot, it'd be good if you do repetitive sports with a particular motion like golf or tennis and twisting and turning, things like that. Um, one thing I will say is there's no perfect posture where you line up 10 people with perfect posture and they're all exactly the same. Everyone's body's slightly different, you do slightly different things with them. So perfect posture is going to be a little bit different for everybody, um, but there are good ranges and there are ranges which aren't so good and, and imbalances in the body that can cause problems. So you might not get any pain from poor posture at the moment. So if you sit at a desk a lot and you don't really get a lot of pain, just a few aches and then you go out and do sports, you might not be that you get pain, but you might get those regular little strains you might get, um, it might hold you back actually from your sports performance. So you might not be able to run as fast or move quite as freely in the hips if you're sidestepping or changing direction, things like that. So it's important to address these things and just try and keep on top of it, especially if you do find just sat down a hell of a lot or doing a lot of repetitive um, physical work. And just try and balance out the body basically, which is what kind of what Pilates is all about. It'd be good to have a basic knowledge of Pilates, but if you don't, there's a couple of videos on my YouTube channel you should watch. Uh, which are the Pilates setup, which in itself is a postural alignment exercise, and we'll do that now, uh, and also the, the roll down, which will also be included today. But it'd be good to watch those videos to get those um, particularly nailed, um, because I will take you through them, but this video is going to be one that you can do regularly. So once I finish talking, it's going to be a shorter um, spell. We're going to do less repetitions than we might do in a normal hour-long Pilates session. So we can go through that range of exercises and movements quickly and regularly so you could do this daily and I'm hoping to get it nailed in about 20 minutes maximum um, but we're going through a good few exercises so as usual it's all about keeping control and good alignment through the body throughout and we always start off by getting ourselves aligned so I'll talk you through this now and we're going to go through the Pilates setup very quickly um, so first of all we always start with those feet uh, which we want hip distance apart. Natural turnout, if you've got a natural turnout with your feet like I have, all those toes point forward, we want soft knees. And then we start with pelvic tilts, which is one normally reserved for not public places, but I do do these in the gym now. Now this is a very important movement for the lower back and the pelvis alignment. So what we start to do is with a soft knee, don't lock out the knees, we start to tuck the tailbone under and stick the tailbone out. Now we do this at the beginning of every Pilates session and a few times throughout to find our good alignment through the spine and the pelvis. So you can have your hands on the front and back if you want to, or you can have your hands on the hips. Now the important thing is that we're not rocking forwards and backwards or thrusting or anything like that. We wanna really focus on the pelvis and bending the knees a little bit can help with that. We don't want anything else to move and we're just flattening and then arching that lower back. You should find in that lower back, there's a big movement happening there. And it's good to make these bigger and bigger. This is NHS recommended exercise actually for back pain, but it's also good for just keeping your lower back nice and mobile, keeping a good range of motion in that lumbar spine. Once you've got a nice big pelvic tilt, we're making this smaller each time. So we're gonna reduce that down with each movement until you come to a natural stop. When you come to a natural stop, should be a natural curve in the lower back, hip bones should be in line, pubic bones should be level roughly with those bony bits of the hips. That's a neutral pelvis, big shoulder roll. We'll do a few of these breathing in and out as you slide those shoulder blades back and down towards those back pockets. We'll do a few of these. This is a great thing to do to break up periods of sitting down, the Pilates setup, particularly the shoulder rolls, bringing those shoulders up as you breathe in, back down towards those back pockets, breathing in and out, breathing in and out and just relax into good posture. We want that good posture across the shoulders now so we're not rounding anymore. We've got those shoulders back and down. We're nice and long in the neck. So we're gonna push the chin in a little bit if we need to. We want that neck to lengthen, pushing the crown of the head up towards the ceiling. And this should be the body in reasonably good alignment. Natural curves through the spine, standing tall, hips level, no posterior or anterior tilt of the pelvis. We're in that middle, nice and long through the neck. So we're set up really, really nicely. Now the next exercise we'll do from our good setup position is a side bending movement. So I want your fingertips on the side of your leg. Imagine wearing trousers with seams down the middle. We're just going to come into a side bend, keeping the hips as still as we can. Bring yourself up tall, stand in the middle, back in that good alignment, and then you go the other way. Now even if you just pause for a second in the centre, we just want the spine to realign before we go the other way. And I want you to imagine you're between two panes of glass. 
here so you can't lean forward, you can't lean back, you can't twist. You just keep going with those side bends for me. Core's nice and strong, belly button's pulled in, pelvic floor's lifted. Breathe out as you come over to one side, running the fingertip towards the knee, breathing as you come back up. So we need to keep that neutral spine. We're not sticking tailbone out or um, tucking the tailbone under. We're staying tall, shoulders are staying back and down. Your head just moves with the rest of the body. So a side bending, a lateral flexion, extension of the spine, really, really important for posture, very good for other activity, high intensity activity and sports. We probably wanna do about 12 of these in each direction. Breathing out as we come over, keep your core's engaged. It is important, as I said, to understand core engagement, belly button pull through towards the spine to about 30, 40% of maximum. Pelvic muscles engaged as well, very important part of the core, those low pelvic muscles uh, on the undercarriage, so to speak. We want those muscles engaged, that's an important part of the core. Let's just do a couple more of these each way. Breathing out as we come over. Notice my hips aren't moving as well, we're not moving those hips from either side. Keep that nice and fixed. Getting some fle lateral flexion extension through that spine, keeping tall, breathing deeply. Let's do one more each way. Breathing out as you come over, in as we come up tall. All that movement comes from the spine, so we're improving that spinal mobility and that spinal alignment. Once you've done those, we'll come to the end of the mat for a Pilates roll down. So we stand up nice and tall in that good setup position again. Core strong, you need your belly button in, pelvic floor lifted. Nice deep breath in. And you're breathing out as your chin just drops to your chest. Now keep the core strong, let your shoulder blades separate, the arms hang. And I just want you to let the weight of your head and your arms pull you over towards your feet. Keep your legs straight and your knees soft. Try and tuck your tailbone under for me as much as you can for as long as you can. Not as much as you can, just a little tuck in the tailbone is fine. You should feel a stretch in the lower back. And you're peeling over to your maximum stretch. You might be keeping the hands on the legs. They might make it to the feet, might make it to the floor. When you get that nice deep breath in, Breathe out, stretch a little bit more. <sighs> Breathe in again. Breathe out as you push through the front of the feet, balls of the feet and the toes, rebuilding your spine. Now, legs straight, knees soft, core is strong. When the hands get to the knees, we want a little tuck of the tailbone, bringing the pelvis back to neutral. And then we're rebuilding that spine, restacking that spine up one bit at a time. Think about one vertebrae at a time. At the top, the shoulders roll back to good alignment. The neck is long, the chin tucks. Nice deep breath in, we breathe out, we're coming over again. Chin to chest, head hangs like dead weight, arms slide forward. Keep the fingertips on the legs if you want, or just let them hang. And just let the weight of your head and arms pull you towards the floor. Legs straight, knees soft, belly button in, pelvic muscles engaged, peeling over with that slightly tucked tailbone for as long as you can. At some point you won't be able to. And you ease into your maximum, wherever that might be. You might have hands on legs, feet or the floor. Nice deep breath in. We're breathing out as we push through the feet to rebuild, restack, push through the balls of the feet and the toes, legs straight, knees soft, core strong, hands get to the knees, we do the little tailbone tuck, we're rebuilding, coming up nice and tall, really think about restacking the spine as you come out one bit at a time, shoulders roll back, head comes up tall, nice deep breath in, breathing out for the last time, peeling over towards the floor, tuck the chin, shoulders slide forward, we're peeling, legs straight, knees soft, core strong, Heel over towards the floor, making your way down towards those feet, towards your maximum stretch, wherever that might be. When you get there, nice deep breath in. We breathe out and stretch. Then we're gonna bend those knees, hands come to the mat, we're gonna come down onto the floor. We're gonna set ourselves up for a plank, a plank on just the elbows. So you wanna tuck those elbows directly under the shoulders and I need you to be strong through those arms, not relaxing into this. We need to be strong. Tuck those toes under and keep those legs about hip distance apart. We need the shoulders back and down, the chin tucked, so you're looking just towards the floor ahead of you. And we need you to tuck your tailbone under as well. A little tuck of the tailbone, you'll feel the abdominals kick in already. It's almost like you're pushing pubic hip bones in towards the mat, feel that engagement. Belly button pulls in, pelvic floor lifts, and we're gonna take a nice deep breath in. We're gonna breathe out, and you've got a few options. You can come to level one, hips up in line with your shoulders. Level two is a knee lift and lower, doing that on both sides. And option three is a double knee lift coming into a full plank, nice straight line through the body, strong through the arms, shoulder blades back and down, tailbone tucked, belly button in, pelvic floor lifted. If you really struggle with this, you can bring one knee down at a time, taking the pressure off the back, but still working the core. Then you can lift one knee at a time again, coming into the full plank. Whatever option you're going for, just hold for me. If you're staying in that full plank, just hold, breathe deeply, just hold into that plank. Keep the tailbone tucked, belly button pulled in, Pelvic floor lifted, shoulders back and down, chin tucked, 
We're just keeping this nice line through the body. Okay, we don't bum up in the air or hips down by the floor. Both are very bad for posture and for the back or the shoulders. Keep holding there, keep breathing. Keep going with that form. You want to hold for about a minute. So we've got about 10 seconds left. Keep the tailbone tucked under. Breathe deeply in through the nose, out through the mouth. Three, two, one. Knees down, hips down. Just take pressure off your shoulders for a couple of breaths. We just completely relax. We've just got one more round. Another breath in. Breathing out. Set yourself up. Toes tucked. Elbows underneath the shoulders. Palms down. Shoulders back and down. Tuck the chin. Tuck the tailbone. Really important for that lower back. Belly button in. Pelvic floor lifts. Nice deep breath in. We're breathing out as we come up to either a level one. You've got your single knee lift lowers. You've got your double knee lifts. And if you want lowers, or you're in your full plank, just hold there. Push those heels back a little bit. Keep your belly button pulled in, pelvic floor lifted. Keep breathing. If you're not breathing, you're not planking, just hold the plank. This is great for back pain, whatever level you're doing. This is great for posture. Keep the shoulders back and down, the chin tucked. Keep that nice line through the body. Remember, no bums up in the air. No hips down by the floor. Nice line through the body, chin tucked, shoulders back and down. Keep holding that for me. Keep going with that, 20 seconds left. Belly button pulled in. Pull that belly button up as if there was a spike underneath. Lift the pelvic muscles like you're desperate for the toilet, trying not to go. Breathe, hold, staying there. Just keep holding, last 10 seconds. Stay strong through those arms. Shoulders back and down. Three, two, and one. Knees come down, hips come down. Take the pressure off those arms for a second. Bring the arms down by the sides. Let your head relax down. Nice deep breath in. And breathe out. Then take your other ear down, nice deep breath in, and out, relax. Now we're going to work really on that slumping shoulders, shoulder neck pain, that sort of thing from very good for computer work. We're going to work on the dart exercise. I want you to lengthen those legs hip distance apart, let your toes come in, relax your heels outwards. We need to tuck the tailbone under again, just like with the plank, taking that big arch out of the lower back slightly. Shoulders back and down, forehead on the mat. I want you to pull your belly button up towards your spine again and lift the pelvic muscles. We're going to take a nice deep breath in. And as you breathe out, I just want you to squeeze your shoulder blades together as tight as you can. Pull those shoulder blades back, squeeze them together. Imagine you've got a 50 pound note between those shoulder blades. You don't need to take it away. I can't pull it out from between those shoulder blades. Legs are relaxed, belly button pulled in, tailbone tucked, pelvic floor lifted. Slide those shoulder blades towards those back pockets. And if you're happy to, let the arms lengthen the lift. Push those fingertips towards the heels. Squeezing those shoulder blades, sliding towards the back pockets. Keep breathing, keep the core strong, the tailbone tucked, legs relaxed. And if you're happy to go to the next level, we'll lift the upper body off the floor. So we lift the chest, keeping the neck tucked. So you're looking down towards the floor in front of you, not up forwards, but down. We're still squeezing those shoulder blades as tight as we can. It's all about that shoulder blade squeeze. We're pulling those shoulders back and down. The opposite of bad posture. Tucking the chin, looking down, nice long neck, belly button's pulled in, tailbone's tucked, legs are relaxed, we're breathing. Three, two, and one. Let's relax down. You can take an ear to the mat, nice deep breath in, and breathe out. Swap sides, breathe in, breathe out. And then we're setting ourselves up for the second round. Forehead down, arms down by the sides, palms up. Tuck the tailbone, toes in, heels out, keeps the legs relaxed, core strong, belly button in, pelvic floor lifted. Nice deep breath in. We breathe out and squeeze the shoulder blades. We'll slide those shoulder blades towards the back pockets. We'll let the arms lengthen and lift. If you're happy to, we'll let the upper body lift, chest lifting, head comes with it, so you're just lengthening through spine. I want you to imagine you're pushing out the crown of the head towards the wall, opposite, still squeezing the shoulder blades, still pushing those fingertips towards the heels. Pulling in the belly button, lifting the pelvic muscles. Until now, we've kept the legs relaxed. But if you'd like to go a step further, we're going to squeeze the glutes, let the, the bum, let the tension run all the way down the legs, lengthen the legs and let them lift. So now we're lifting the upper body, lengthening, lifting the upper and lower body, squeezing the glutes, belly button pulled in. Still think about tucking the tailbone, although it'd be very difficult now. But those shoulder blades are still squeezing. You're breathing deeply in through the nose out through the mouth. You can beat those arms if you like. Nice strong beats coming from the shoulders, like a 100, which we will be doing shortly. Nice strong beats, squeezing the glutes, core strong, last 10 seconds. Keep squeezing those shoulder blades, keep breathing. 
shoulder blades back and down towards those back pockets. Three, two, and one. Relax down, ear to the mat. Nice deep breath in, breathe out. Swap in sides. And we can push back into a child's pose stretch if you like, just to release through the spine, releasing through the back. And then when you're ready, we're going to come over onto our side. So we're going to be on the back edge of the mat here with the legs bent. So you've got your feet on the edge of the mat. You've got your shoulder on the edge of the mat, arms out in front of you. You can get a cushion or a block to go under your forehead, if, under the side of your head if you like. You don't have to if you're quite comfortable without. It just supports the weight of the head. Entirely up to you if you want that or not. Arms stacked. Um, and we need to get these hips on top of each other facing forward. We need that neutral spine like we set up at the beginning when we were stood up. Nice deep breath in. And we're going to breathe out as we lift open the arm. Take it up and over, following with the head. Try and keep your nose pointing at your hand all the way over. And when you open, breathe in. And then breathe out as you start to close. Bring in the arm all the way back to that start position. It is best to have a cushion or something underneath that head if that's more comfortable, just to support the neck. We're breathing out as we open, taking that arm up and over, nice and straight, all the way over to your maximum stretch. Breathe in once you're there, and breathe out and start to bring that arm back. All the time, we're keeping these hips facing forward. Don't let the hips tip back or the legs lift. We're just doing five of these, breathing, out as we open, taking that arm back. Feel the chest open, this is a chest opener. Chest open, shoulder opens. Neck stretches, breathe in when you're open. Breathe out as you close. This is also twisting your spine. So we're working on that mobility of the spine, lumbar and thoracic. One fourth repetition. We open, following with that head, breathe in. Breathe out as you close. We'll do one more and we'll do a couple of breaths when we open. So we're going to open up that chest and shoulder, twisting the spine. You should feel that hips keep facing forward. Nice couple of breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Just try and stretch a bit more, get the hand closer to the floor or the arm flatter on the floor. Each breath, two or three breaths. And then we breathe in, we breathe out and we'll bring that arm back over to that start position. We'll come over then onto our backs. So we're gonna work through a few shoulder bridges. Can you keep this nice and simple? So I want those heels underneath your knees, if you can. I can't quite get mine there. Don't quite have that mobility. Um, fractured knee and things like that. But we want those feet and knees hip distance apart. Neutral spine, just like we set up at the beginning. So we do a few pelvic tilts if you like, and then settle that down into your neutral spine. Tiny bit of space under the lower back, not enough to get the hands to meet in the middle, but there's a tiny gap. Pubic and hip bones are level, just like when we were stood up. Shoulders back and down. It's good to pick up your head and just put it back down on the floor. You should feel like your neck's nice and long. So what we're gonna do here is a shoulder bridge. One of the best back pain exercises, one of the best postural exercises, also one of the best exercises for sports performance. So nice deep breath in through the nose. You're gonna squeeze your glutes, tucking your tailbone under, lifting your bum off the floor. Then you're gonna breathe out and slowly start to peel your spine off the mat, one vertebrae at a time, bit by bit by bit, really slowly coming up into a shoulder bridge. So you're on the shoulders and the feet, you've got a nice diagonal line from shoulder to knee. So we don't be going too far with this, just a nice line, squeezing the glutes, belly button pulled in, pelvic floor lifted as well. Nice deep breath in. We're breathing out as we're rolling the spine, one vertebrae at a time, back down into the mat. Now with this exercise, there's loads of options, but we're not gonna go through those. We're keeping it nice and simple today. We're just doing the shoulder bridge. So at the bottom, when you're back in neutral, you take a breath in, tucking your tailbone, squeezing your glutes, you breathe out, you're peeling your spine bit by bit by bit away, coming up into your shoulder bridge. Nice diagonal line, squeezing the glutes, your belly button's pulled in, pelvic muscles engaged, breathe in, we're breathing out as we're rolling back down into the mat, one vertebrae at a time, bit by bit by bit by bit, back to neutral. Let's do number three, breathing in, tuck the tailbone, squeeze the glutes, breathe out, peel away, bit by bit. Really think about peeling that spine, one vertebrae at a time, like you're peeling a bike chain or a necklace off the floor. At the top, squeezing the glutes, squeezing the core, nice deep breath in. We're breathing out as we're rolling back down. We want to do about eight of these. 
Eight repetitions, really controlled, really slow. We're back in neutral. We breathe in, tuck the tailbone, squeeze the glutes, breathe out, peel away from the floor, bit by bit by bit by bit, coming up into your bridge. Squeezing those glutes, keeping the core strong all the way up and down. Nice deep breath in. You're breathing out, you're relaying the spine. And what you do about laying that spine down one piece at a time, like that bike chain or that neck, neck link necklace, all the way down into neutral. Three more, breathing in, squeeze the glutes, tuck the tailbone, breathing out, peel the spine away. Coming up one bit at a time into that bridge, squeezing the glutes and the core. Stay strong, stay controlled, breathe in, breathe out, bring that back down one bit at a time until you're back in neutral. Two more, we breathe in, squeeze the glutes, tuck the tailbone, breathe out, peel the spine away. One bit at a time into that shoulder bridge, squeezing the glutes of the core all the way up and all the way down. Breathe in, breathe out, we're lowering, still squeezing the glutes, belly button still pulled to the spine. That feeling like you're desperate for the toilet, trying to hold it, that pelvic engagement going. One more bridge, squeeze your glutes, tuck the tailbone, peel away. Just keep breathing all the way through. Nice, strong bridge, squeezing the glutes and core. Nice deep breath in. We're breathing out as we relay that spine. One vertebrae at a time, one last time. This is the most commonly recommended exercise for back pain. It's great for glute engagement, good for the hamstrings, core, and good for posture, stretches, strengthens the hamstrings. Give the knees a squeeze into the chest, just give them a bit of a a squeeze in towards you. Then we're going to work on those abdominals. So we do one abdominal exercise here, um, which it sounds counterintuitive because we actually curl the body off the floor. Um, however, it's very good at strengthening the neck, the abdominals, and um, stabilizing muscles around the back. So it's very, and also the hips. So it is a good exercise despite looking like poor posture. Forget that. So we're in neutral again, just like before the pelvic tilt, the small space under the lower back. Belly button pulled in, pelvic floor lifted. We're going to take one leg to what we call a tabletop position, vertical thigh, shin parallel to the floor. If you do have back problems, it's normally best to imprint, tucking the tailbone, flattening the lower back down. We then take, we get hip rib connection, slide bottom ribs to hips, leg two comes to tabletop. So we're going to work through a 100. So you're going to bring the upper body off the floor next. So pulling your belly button to spine all the time, lifting the pelvic muscles, you're going to bring your upper body off the floor. Shoulders are back and down. You don't want a gap between the chin and the chest. You don't want to be forcing it onto the chest. A gap there, look towards the toes, looking between the gap but through the knees there. Shoulder blades are high. We're going to start to beat those arms. Nice strong beats coming from the shoulders like we did with the dart exercise. Shoulder blades staying high, beating those arms. And we've probably done one breath now. So we're breathing in, two, three, four, five. We're breathing out, two, three, four, five. And that's one breath. Breathing in, two, three, four, five. Out, two, three, four, five, two breaths. We want to do 10. That's five breaths. If you want to work the abdominals harder, you could lengthen those legs to 45 degrees. Keep them hip distance apart. That's six, let's do four more. Strong beats from the shoulders, remember, shoulder blades high. Once you've done 10 breaths, legs come to tabletop, upper body comes down, one leg down at a time, and just stretch out nice and long along that full body stretch. Really stretch out nice and long. Squeeze your glutes, open up those hips, rotate the feet and the hands, let the back and the ribs arch off the mat. So that's our 100. If you found that when you were in this position, your neck gets really tired, instead of beating the arms, you can support the weight of the head. It does make it harder on the abdominals, but it takes the pressure off your neck, okay? Um, and it's five beats for a breath in, five beats for a breath out is one breath. We do 10. Once you've done the 100, we're coming over onto our other side for the chest opener on the other side. So our five open closes, feet in line with your bum, up through the body, arms out in front, cushion, or um, if you like, anything under the, floor, uh, under the side of the head here. And we're gonna breathe in to prepare. We're gonna breathe out as we open the arm up and over, taking that arm back behind us, stretching. We breathe in and we breathe out as we bring that arm back to the start position. And we breathe in 
we breathe out as we open, taking our hand back, following with the nose, not just the eyes. Maybe you can get the hand to the floor, try and get the arm a bit closer down. We breathe in, we breathe out as we're closing. So each time we just try and stretch a little bit more, breathe in to prepare, breathe out as you open. Keep those hips facing forwards. Remember, don't let the legs lift or tip back. Keep them facing forward, neutral spine. Breathing in, breathing out as we bring this back to the beginning. Two more, breathing in to prepare, breathing out as we open. Follow that hand with the head all the way over. Try and get that arm a bit closer to or a bit flatter on the floor each time. Hips don't move, they stay forward facing. Breathing in when we're open, we breathe out as we come to a close. This last one will take two or three breaths. So we're gonna breathe in to prepare, breathe out as we open. Taking that hand and arm back, open up the chest and the shoulder. Hips stay facing forward. Three nice deep breaths in through the nose. Breathe out and stretch a bit more. Two more times. And then we'll breathe in. Breathe out as you bring that arm back over to the beginning. So we're going to just come onto our backs. We're going to just uh, give the knee a pull in towards the chest. Just one knee as the other one lays out nice and um, straight. Give that knee a squeeze in towards you, breathing all the time in through the nose, out through the mouth. And every out breath, just give that knee a little bit more of a pull in towards you. Really keep that pressure on there. Release slightly, bring the knee back. And this time I want you to push the knee into the hand. So push the knee back into the hand. Just about 10 seconds, three or four nice deep breaths. Get that battle going between the two. And then release that leg down. Bring the other leg in. Nice deep breath in. We breathe out. Push um, the pull the knee in towards your chest. Try and relax as much as you can. Don't push the knee into the hands. At this stage, just keep breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth, bringing that knee in towards you bit by bit by bit. Just keep pulling that in towards you. Relax as much as you can with every breath. Then release. Then we bring the leg back and we're going to push the knee into the hands and pull the hands back into the knee, creating a battle. Three or four nice deep breaths, just about 10 seconds. Keep that battle going, keep the tension on. And then just release, bring yourself up to sitting. We're just going to do one the most important stretch for sitting people that sit down a lot so we're going to take the legs into 90 degrees in each leg um, this is a hip flexor stretch when you sit down your hip flexors get really tight they pull your pelvis out of alignment and then out of aligned pelvis can cause ankle pain knee pain neck pain shoulder pain pain everywhere a lot of problems start at the hips so it's important we stretch these hip flexors so we start off shoulders back and down get nice and tall just like we did at the beginning and i just want you to put your hands on your hips we tuck the tailbone under, so we're doing that pelvic tilt, tucking the tailbone under. For me, that's an instant stretch in the hip flexors there. We're then going to squeeze the glute and just gently ease forward into that stretch. Just gently feel that stretch increase in intensity. If you want to broaden that stretch a little bit more, we take the hand to the opposite knee as we twist, slightly rotating around. You might feel a stretch in the back, but you'll certainly feel a broader stretch around that hip flexor. Keep breathing, just stretching, keep the glute squeezing, tucking the tailbone. And then just release completely. And then we're going to go into the same stretch, tuck the tailbone, squeeze the glute, ease forward into that hip flexor stretch. And the same side you're stretching, you take that arm up above. Pull your belly button in, lift your pelvic floor. Nice deep breath in. We're going to breathe out as we reach back, still tucking the tailbone, still pushing the hip forward, but we're stretching those abdominals, the back, and we're further stretching the psoas. And we're going to release there. We're going to swap those legs around. Now this stretch you should do daily without fail if you are in a sit down job driving or at a desk or anything like that sales that type of thing so we tuck the tailbone squeeze the glute ease gently forwards into that stretch feel that hip flexor start to stretch straight away if you want that more intensity you keep squeezing the glute tucking the tailbone you can take that rotation over that knee in front just rotating you'll find that broadens the stretch across the hip flexors there keep breathing keep that stretch going and then just release off for me and then bring yourself back into that stretch straight up tall tucking the tailbone squeezing the glute we bring that same side you're stretching that hand comes up pull your belly button in engage the pelvic muscles nice deep breath in 
Good breathing out as you reach back. Follow that hand with the head, stretching those abdominals, stretching that psoas more deeply, stretching through the back of the neck, and then just release there. Push yourself up through that knee. And including my talking, it was half an hour, sorry, um, but you can probably squeeze that into 20-ish, 25 minutes, which would be a great little routine to do um, to break up periods of sitting, lunch breaks. If you could do that daily and you know your posture has been affected by sitting down a lot, it'd be a brilliant little routine for you. Feel free to get in touch with me with any questions or feedback at all. Um, really appreciate you watching the video and hopefully speak to you again soon.